Major General Danny Fortin, seen here heading into a sexual assault trial this week, says he's innocent. He wore his uniform and 10 medals across his chest. That sparked outrage for some. At best, it's tone deaf. At worst, it's intimidation and bullying. Retired Major Donna Rigadell is a sexual trauma survivor and trainer contracted by the military. She's calling on the forces to ban those accused of sexual assault from wearing uniforms in civilian court. The impact to this is that it sets it up that any survivor facing off against an offender, especially a highly ranked one, is facing off against the entire institution versus just their offender. I don't think it's unfair to allow them to wear their uniform. Criminal defense lawyer Lawrence Greenspawn says people who choose to wear uniforms in court shouldn't have that right taken away. Uh, the issues before the judge are the credibility of that person, uh, not the, uh, the medals on their chest uh, of the uniform. Holding us to account is super important. The issue of uniforms and power dynamics was front and center at the Mass Casualty Commission in Nova Scotia last month. RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky testified in civilian clothing. The commission requested it over concerns her uniform could be triggering. I mean, I think what that example shows is that there's greater efforts to make the courtroom trauma um, to be trauma informed. And that means putting the feelings and the perspective of the victim uh, as a priority. Fortin and his lawyer won't comment during the ongoing criminal trial. A spokesperson for Fortin, who doesn't want to be named over fear of online reprisals, said Fortin's innocent and his uniform expresses his 37 years of service. The Department of National Defense says that if a military member is accused of a crime, it's their own personal choice if they wear their uniform or not to civilian court, but also said that the military is committed to being more trauma informed and will review if that dress code needs to change. Ashley Burke, CBC News, Ottawa.